Welcome, friends and fans, to another episode of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing convention-style entertainment directly to you. And today, we are visiting the world of The Walking Dead with three of its stars, and now's the time for all of you in our chat room to begin typing in your questions. We'll be looking for the best ones you can come up with that involve all of today's guests and their contributions to this amazing series. Based on the zombie apocalypse comic by Robert Kirkman, the Walking Dead TV series debuted at AMC in 2010 and rapidly became one of the most popular series of the past decade, generating video games, webisodes, two spinoff shows, its own talk show, and a forthcoming film series slated to co-star one of our guests who will be joining us here for the next 50 minutes. Immediately after this, you have the opportunity to talk to them directly through our private chat options, as well as purchasing autographs and personalized video recordings. Some of these opportunities are limited, so please head over to galaxycon.com for details. And now let's meet our guests. First, he is an actor, boom operator, stunt coordinator, and director, whose credits include Halt and Catch Fire, Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell, and Shazam. Today he joins us to speak about his role as the axe-wielding Jerry. Please welcome Cooper Andrews. Hello there. <laughs> Hello, young man. How are you? Uh, we are well. How are you doing in your part of the world? I feel like Oz. <laughs> I think someone said it the other day, but like, you not <laughs> welcome here. So that's me right now. I'm Ozzing <laughs> it up. Indeed, indeed. Uh, well, I saw you in Lakeley a few months ago, and now you're sans beard. So everybody, yeah. everybody's growing a quarantine beard. You shaved yours off. Yeah, I figured if everyone's going to grow one, I'm just going to lose it. That's just how it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Great eyes. And let's bring up our next guest. She is a writer, director, and actress whose work includes Happ and Leonard, Lodge 49, and the Offspring Trilogy, including the latest release, co-star Agu Cooper, as well as written and directed by her herself. It is called Darlin. Today, she joins us as the actress behind Anne, a.k.a. Jadis. Please welcome Pollyanna McIntosh. Hello, Polly. I'm so impressed. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you're you like, so much. Getting it out, getting it out. <laughs> absolutely, Hello. absolutely. How are how are you in your part of the world? I'm doing really well, thanks. I'm in Los Angeles. Um, I'm a Scot originally, though, and I'm very lucky to live in California because you know spring is springing and the sun is shining and gives some hope, doesn't it? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Especially if these rumors that the sun uh, will help alleviate the unpleasantness. Oh God, let us not make this <laughs> public service announcement. Otherwise, we're really going to cock it up. <laughs> Well, I've got a lot of Celtic blood. I just drink some, uh, drink some hand sanitizer at the same time. I got a lot of Celtic blood myself, so uh, you, you're in the sun. But by all means, wear, remember that sunscreen as well, because Dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there is the pallidity is happening. In fact, I'm sitting with the with the sun coming in through my window in my office, which is lovely. Um, but yeah, I do feel like a veal cow for the closet. <laughs> oh my. Well, in that case, let's bring up our final guest. He is an actor, writer, and director whose body of work includes Last Shift, Black Lightning, and The Righteous Gemstones. Today, he's here to talk about his role as both a walker and then later on returning to the show as Jared of the Saviors. Please welcome Josh Mickle. What's up? Hey! How are you? Hey, what's up? Thanks for having me. Yes, Josh. <laughs> I <laughs> have you, Joshua Maximus. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, Joshua Maximus. That's my that's my Roman name. Been doing a lot of Latin studies lately. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Caveat emptor indeed. So what I would love to do is I'd love to hear individually how you each got involved with the uh, the Walking Dead franchise. Uh, Josh, I believe we start with you as a walker. Yeah, um, I, had a, I had a roommate, uh, my friend Melanie at the time, who uh, was doing costumes on the show. And she posted on Facebook something about a, a rush call for, for extras. And I had long wanted to be on the show. It was like season two. Um, but I, I still had known a lot, a lot about the show and been watching it. And, um, so I, I submitted, got, got accepted, drove down there. They put me through makeup. I mean, it, absolutely bonkers makeup. And at, at the time, you know, Gino and, and some of the guys that, that are doing makeup, um, a little bit more seriously on the show, we're, we're kind of working with the, all the extras they had that day. Um, and it was the season finale. So uh season finale of, of season two and i and i did my best to to get my face on screen we, we bust through the the farmhouse fence and uh oh, yeah oh my god yeah. that's exciting yeah. did yeah. herschel yeah. shoot you no no, no i didn't get any of that. didn't even get close to herschel but i i got uh 
there was a there was a camera that was right over the top of us, and I and I just made sure my face was just like, Ugh, you know, like <laughs> up to the camera uh, to get myself in. Uh, did uh, sorry, did you get? I'm asking the questions now. Probably, <laughs> oh, please, you, this, this is your show. I'm just the oh, thanks. <laughs> did you get um? Did you get on those Talking Dead, the Walkers we lost type things, or were they not doing that at the time? I don't, I don't know, actually. I don't think I did. I, I didn't get killed. I, I just broke through. Oh, okay. and Yeah. Okay. Um, but then when I, when I did do the talk, talking dead with you, um, mm -hmm. I guess they showed some of the, some of the pictures, the, the set photos that Greg, I, actually remember, yeah. up. I guess Greg didn't want him to show as they were. Cause they were like, I was kind of blurry in the background or something. So Greg doc doctored them up himself so they could show those things. Wow, he's he's, he's a detail-oriented man. That man, oh, Joshua. Yeah. Did the uh, yeah. did the infamous zombie school exist at that point? No, the, but there was there was somebody you know a PA that came by was like you know don't no no fast moving zombie <laughs> you know just can, kind of give us gave us the uh, the breakdown there. No but Michael like Jackson moves. <laughs> yeah, no Michael Jackson moves. Nothing crazy. Keep your distance. You know, it, it was it was actually kind of space out. Keep your distance uh, yeah. at the time, which was pretty funny. Hmm, very nice, very nice. And uh, I was it Cooper or Pollyanna who came on next? A few when, years oh, later. oh, Coop came on. You mean on? In, you mean on the show? On the series, sorry, yeah, the show, so yeah. Literal, I'm like, um, I think Coop Cooper is on first. Yeah, yeah. And then I came on after. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a little after quite a yeah, bit. Yeah, I came. I did. I boomed in season three. Some uh, some scenes. I think my. My first day was with um, uh, Lori Holden and the, um, and the governor and, and did Morrissey. So I had to shoot this scene that they were talking. And I just remember thinking, they have three cameras. There's nowhere to stick a stick in here. But and I just stood like this. I was like this for <laughs> like pretty much the whole time doing nothing. This is like. This is the job of the boom op. Sometimes I know I'm not going to get any sound and they're just going to use lobs, but I was just like this, trying not to make a shadow. Um, That's why boom operators have to have really nice pits that smell good. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to smell good. You got to smell good. You got to smell good. You can't yeah. just, you can't bump your, your pits into someone's face. But <laughs> you reminded me, Josh, uh, we were, when we were shooting um, uh, uh, this, this, this season, uh, uh, episode 11 or whatever, um, when we had like this giant firewall, <laughs> they had all these all these walkers coming up to like against you know the survivors, and and there's apparently one walker like at the beginning who did like a turn uh. into camera, <laughs> <laughs> like I mean he, they're just marching. I mean it's like it feels like a few hundred. It's just like a oh, ton yeah. of walkers uh, that are actually there, and and, and uh, Mikey was like, who did that? You get, I can't see your face. You, we got to do it again. Don't turn around. Hey, turned around again. Okay, oh, who is God. that? So it was. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. You can even tell on that on the day I worked, like season two, the people, you know, it's the classic kind of extra thing. Like you, you're waiting for your opportunity, and they were just like jockeying for position even through the gate. You know, this kind of like wild, like, oh, I, I, I know where the cameras are, and I'm gonna get up front. <laughs> video notes just for fun to put on somewhere sometime. This will be for three minutes of the time. Been, <laughs> it's a, it's doing a, video, a really huh? great job of it's this, and I want to like, yeah, it's a video. Sorry, <laughs> I'll do a photo now. Uh, great, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Here you go. Oh. <laughs> just great, Gavin. Do, do we have to be careful about what we say because there are children out there listening? Maybe. Uh, it's your show. You set the rating. Trouble, trouble. Within reason. <laughs> yeah, sure, so, sure. so Pollyanna, how did uh, how did this flip on your radar? The show had the show flip on my radar. Yeah. Um. So I'd heard about it. I knew about it. I remember when it first started, and I remember being one of those people who thought uh, Andrew Lincoln playing an American sheriff because, of course, being a Brit, I knew his work and I, I admired his work and had loved him for years. But I was like, oh, I don't know about that. And zombies on the TV? What are they trying to do? Some sort of like, you know. And then I, I learned about the comics and realized, oh, this is from a really great source. And this is and he was so brilliant. Um, but it still wasn't a show that I had I had watched a lot. And uh, I just had the audition, went in. It was for a man or a woman. So I was like, 
that's exciting because it means they're thinking outside the box. Um, and the character of Jadis was written down as being called Brion. Uh, and she, she or he was very mysterious. And um, I just was really into the, the wording, the way it was, you know, the dialogue, the way it was spaced out was so unusual. And I went in and it was one of the most lovely audition experiences. Sometimes, you know, they go, they go different ways. Sometimes, a lot of the time they're great, but sometimes you wish that they were a little more present with you so that you could do your best work. And in this case, they were super present. I felt really comfortable in the room. And off I went thinking, well, you know, The Walking Dead, I mean, probably not going to get it, but I did a good job. I felt like that, which was nice. And then I was told, oh, you're in the running. And then the next day I was told that it was looking like I was going to get the offer. The next day, and then, you know, four days later, I was down in Georgia doing the first five apps. And yeah. um, that quick. Yeah, that quick. Wow. Cooper, you had a quick turnaround too, didn't you? Uh, you were like filming yeah. a short film or something over, you had to go literally in 12 hours to Atlanta? Yeah, so I did, <laughs> it was like, uh, I did, I sent in a few auditions Friday and then again Saturday, uh, I sent in the tapes. And then um, I was shooting, uh, I was shooting some stuff with friends, it's like this fight thing. Um, and I was in a swimming pool and it was Monday morning and manager at the time was like you sitting down and i hate that question more than anything so i'm like yeah. kind of what's up you know <laughs> and she's like you got walking dead and they want you to fly in today and i go oh my god i'm like okay um <laughs> do you think i can go in tomorrow morning or uh can i like i think i go like can i go like tonight like late tonight tomorrow morning and, and they're like <laughs> well, okay, we could we could check with that, and then they're like, well, they'd look at if you came in today. I'm like, Ugh. so I got like really frustrated, really frustrated Jeez. about it, um, which is so funny. But I was already I was like doing something in my head. I was trying to shoot this thing for like the last month, and then I was like, of course, um, it did get finished though. Um, but it was still very frustrating. It? Huh? It's oh, well, I haven't finished it. I just finished shooting it. No, it's okay, uh, okay, okay the um but that was years ago i just and then i just stopped uh i stopped on that but it was like a fight sequence with, with friends but it looks really cool i'll send you a i'll dope. send you what i do have but uh thank you hey, hey, um, dope, like stunt stunt videos which are amazing so, oh yeah i got some talented friends it's crazy hey, hey coop I, or and pollyanna have you guys ever heard from people that audition for the the part as well like do you yes. do you know other actors that audition for the part? Yes, I do, because it's a really good question, Josh. Uh, nice one. Um, <laughs> uh, Sorry, because... Patty, get out the way. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, anyway. uh, so Sorry. I do, because my right and left in the junkyard, um, Brion played by uh, Tom, Thomas Francis Murphy, and Tamiel played by Sabrina Generino, they both auditioned for the role too. So they were, we were all coming in for Brion, who was the role that was Jadis slash Anne. And I don't know if they purposely hit it as that name or they changed their mind about it. I've, I've never asked. But um, yeah, so I heard about their auditions for the same role. And then when they didn't get that one, they didn't think they were going to get anything. And then it was like, oh, no, we want you. We just want you for these two different roles. Dang. So that's right. kind of cool. But that's a really good question. I've not met anyone else outside of them. Yeah. yeah. And um, to you, Josh, when did it roll around again in a speaking role for you? Um, so season seven, uh, I had auditioned probably, I, I think I, when I went back and looked it up, I had auditioned for the show about 17 times. Um, but it was all for, it was, it was for things that were decent and then other stuff that was like, you know, dude that gets shot in the face with an arrow. So like, uh, I, I auditioned for, Jared, and I think it was it was Jason, and then I also, I also auditioned for Gavin, um, and it was. So they Jared. loved you, and they were trying to find the right spot for you. Yeah, that's fucking great. But see, I, I think that's the same thing. I, I, the the reason why you audition as well with the folks that were in your scene is because they. I think that's uh, that's kind of typical of the show, right? They they start circling you, and they understand they want you in the world, and then it's a, a matter of figuring out where you might fit in the world. And, you know, so so Jason Warner Smith, who played Gavin, also auditioned for Jared. 
Um, you know, so we were both, and, and there was a couple other folks in the Atlanta community because they were casting casting that particular role, I think, regionally. Um, and so, yeah, that, you know, they we, we both auditioned for Gavin and Jared. Um, but I ended up, yeah, ended up on my first episode, 703, that became 702 um, with Coop and all the Kingdom guys that were just coming in, which was amazing because there was no, like, big, you know, Lenny was the only series regular at the time on the show. So it was just mm -hmm. such a, a lovely, you know, atmosphere to enter into. Cause we were all just like, Jesus, we're, you know, we're on this amazing huge show and we're all new here. And it's, you know, it was <laughs> such a, was that you're all nude. We were, we were all new. Uh, <laughs> all nude became uh, the, the after party, of course. <laughs> yeah. That was a good time. You, you completed your first scene or first day. Cause it's always like, <laughs> It's so scary, isn't it? The first first day of anything, still terrifying. But but Lenny right. was so cool too, right, Coop? I mean, you you had had oh, a couple yeah. episodes with him before, or I guess you shot seven hundred two with him prior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean seven hundred. I mean, we shot like the the first day we had was like the all the pig stuff. Um, yeah, when we were corralling the pigs, and yeah, but like you said, I mean, because you know we were we we only worked with uh, I mean, I, we worked with Melissa a little bit. Um, uh, but it was mostly Lenny, uh, for me for that episode. And, but it just felt like our own show, you know, it was just our own group doing our own thing, which is, uh, you know, the case for a lot of us, you know, that's how it, how it's, you start in feeling like your own group and then you, mm -hmm. you get included or we start killing each other, you know, in a very <laughs> lovely, fun way. I love yeah. you, but I might kill you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. One of them. <laughs> yeah. For me, I was like straight up straight up Andy's nose, really, in the first scene that we shot, you know, straight in his face. Um, yeah. But it was all those guys, it was all the good sort of good guys coming to get Gabriel out of the, out of our clutches. So yeah. it was really like meeting everyone on the same day, but then sort of being right up in Andy's pie hole, you know, boat race, what we like to call it. <laughs> Again. So the, the turnaround for this is pretty quick because when they make a selection and they like to, to really throw you all into the deep end, do they give you any sort of insight into your characters in at least a short or medium term? Or is it just, here's the script and the director will walk you through it? For this, I mean, I had a, I had a breakdown. My guy was Lester. Um, so that was the name of Jerry was Lester. And Worst. Yeah. <laughs> so but because of that because of that name i was like all right i i i feel like i get the tone a little bit already but you know they gave him like uh, uh be like uh 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 oh my god i can't even think of words uh biggie uh not biggie that's the wrestler um <laughs> oh my goodness uh <laughs> daddy no that's the yes Sorry, you no not big daddy that's, that's the that's the adam sandler movie right uh, no, it's, well, that is, but I was thinking of Big Daddy, who was a uh, Biggie wrestler. Smalls. Uh, Biggie He's Smalls. Smalls. So they're like the. Uh, um, <laughs> That's the wrestler. Like the. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, they're like be like Biggie Smalls. Just be really zen like. Um, oh my the first one. Name. Like be a little like tough and angry, and I was like, ah, uh, you know. So I, I I did them all, but then it was just uh, uh, I mean I've told this story, but like. Um, the night before, like the night before we were filming, that's when Scott Kimball and I had to talk about like, okay, let's talk about Jerry. And, and so then that's when I came into the more of that zone. And I was so happy because I would have been, I would hate it, have hated playing Jerry th that the way I auditioned. Like, him. I uh -huh. played him. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'd have hated yeah, it. How you auditioned him? Okay. Yeah. yeah just how I auditioned him. I would just hate it. Yeah. Just that, like, I was like, Oh, and I said, sure. and I was, and that's why when they and that was the other reason why they were like, "Oh, you got it." I was like, "Oh, they they were okay with that. They were okay with this. <laughs> All right, that's cool." I was like, Funny though that when they when they're really good at their job, if you're good, but you do it in a way that, like you say, you might come away going, "Oh, I don't know, I don't know." They can still see it. They can still see your capacity. I'm so glad they. <laughs> They overlooked overlooked some glaring faults <laughs> there, but Coop, was yours yeah. was yours in the room? No, I had, uh, it was taped. It was okay. uh, yeah, but I, yeah, because uh, it was I was in LA, but it was through the Finn Cannons um, that that I did it that I did yeah. it for. So he was a 
so it was as a local um yeah local yeah, and Pollyanna, so yours yours was in person though mine was in person in la um and and the question about whether i got info on her it turned out to be her um was you know i just was i remember something about her being regal and slightly patronizing was written in the script with the new group. And that really just made it for me as far as how she reacted with them. Um, but, you know, I found great enjoy, I found humor in her, too. it was in the script, you know, I found humor in her enjoyment of kind of toying with people a bit like a cat with a toy, you know, like, what are you gonna do next? Oh, in that case, I'll do this, you know. Um, and uh, her curiosity about finding out information that way and making people feel uncomfortable so that with this weird di you know, dialect, dialogue, the way in which she spoke, um, was to me always seemed like a way that she could make people feel like they were on the back foot, you know, so that she could learn about them more. So I just always saw her as quite intelligent, all these things that were helpful. Um, but Scott did give, Scott Gimple did give me a good background chat. But with Scott, often the background chat is like, well, of course, I can't tell you why, but, you know, or yeah. this, you know, so there's still a lot of mystery to it. Yeah. Um, and then as you go along, you kind of each season, you have a chat, you know, about how your season's going to be before you start. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. What about you, George? Uh, mine, mine was kind of, it was all organic, I think. Well, I mean, clearly he was a, a terrible person in the sides. <gasps> and then. I, I wasn't getting the full script, so I didn't completely know. And I kind of understood the saviors to be these foils. Um, so I, I knew that was, you know, I, 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 on, on the first day, it was really nice because Greg was directing our episode. So I, I started, you know, taking a little bit riskier chances or, or at least just having a little bit more fun. And he liked it and he, he kept kind of telling me to, you know, kick it up a notch. Um, he was okay with me being terrible and, and the more terrible I was, the better. I, I guess along the way, a couple episodes in, I I, I got Scott's email <laughs> from Jason. Jason uh, Jason was like, you know, we're we're sitting in our chairs one day, and he's just like, yeah, just you know, a little correspondence with Scott, just talking about the character. And I'm like, you, you wait, 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 you're talking to like you're talking to Scott. Why am I not talking to Scott? Why isn't Scott talking to me? Um, you know, so I, I got his email, and I, I was getting, you know, I was doing some wishful thinking, thinking like. I wonder, I'm just going to ask Scott. So I was like, hey, Scott, any any redeeming qualities about this guy? Any? Because I was kind of hoping that I'd transition, just be like, uh, you know, just switch over to join the good guys. And uh, I, I sent Scott that email and he, he wrote back pretty, it was pretty short. It was just like, nope, nope, total, oh, oh, oh. total jerk, like piece of, <laughs> piece of garbage. <laughs> Oh, it's nothing wrong with pieces of garbage. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I should find the email too. It's like, no. no. I thought it'd be LOL, no. LOL, no, exactly. Yeah. yeah. He, I mean, he's a busy guy. It's okay that he, you know. It's right. good. With, with the show being about the walkers and the walkers doing what they do, as well as all the human on human violence. Was there ever something you either read in a script or you saw being prepared for or films that just made you go pause? Oh, they're going to do that to him? Oh! God, I mean, I think if you've seen the show, you're like, that everything has a reason, you know? So I never had any issue with any of the violence. I think the show's been done so well. Um, and it is a comic book-based show, so there's going to be lots of blood and gore, and that's what, you know, that's what the... I said this before, which was completely misinterpreted, by the way, when I said it in, a, in an interview, um, that sounded to them like I was knocking the show. Um, but it, part of the show is that is that color and that excitement and that visceralness of feeling those things. And that's that's a horror, you know, it's one of the reasons it's like a horror masterpiece, the way it does it, you know, and we always care, um, which is so connecting, you know, for an audience as well. But I'm, I'm babbling a bit, but what I'm trying to say is I was fully expecting and looking forward to those elements of the show because I thought, I think they've always been done really responsibly despite how bright and visceral they can be, you know? Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I concur. They have been responsible. That's a very good word for, to describe it, actually. There's, you know, there's a cost to this. There's... 
this is what happens when you do these things to people as opposed to more sanitized television where somebody gets shot and they fall over and that's it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you, uh, they certainly don't make you feel, the show certainly doesn't make you feel as, as same with the comic book, that life isn't important, you know, that humans don't matter. Um, and it also makes the audience feel, I feel like, like we're all the same as well. One of the wonderful things about the show for me is go, me going in was thinking about the fact that, you know, there's whatever gender, race, you know, sexuality, like economic level that these characters were living in before, they come into the world that we get to see them in and we have no, mostly no comprehension of that. So we're not judging people on the exterior societal bullshitty stuff. We're judging them on them as they are now, you know. Um, and as survivors, and as and for their their morality too. So, yeah, I'll take a bit of blood and gore from that. I guess the big reason why so many people connect to the show uh, was yeah. just the fact it's like, oh, how do you measure as you? How would you, with just you, handle this situation? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've had a lot of like. I've had definitely like a lot of oh like moments for sure. I'm like that's gonna like I mean when I got to chop a guy in half. I was pretty excited about oh, that. Yeah, about <laughs> time. Yeah, that was like, time oh. I was like, um, <laughs> just when that's you awesome. hear like how people die, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, oh. yeah, <laughs> a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. I did grind up like tons of walkers through a meat machine, but I was just like a yeah. kid. In- in uh, art school, you know, and like in like in the sand pit with that, right. it's so cool. Because you're what so much about the show as well. It's like you're watching these amazing people come together and make real, really incredible things happen. And so much of it happens with trickery that, of course, is coming from Greg Nicotero's background and which had such a great history. And um, it's always so cool to see like just a guy with a big bucket of slop and red slop, and it's supposed to be you know all these dead bodies, but like. It's it's like art class. It's just so cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sponging it all out onto the machine, you know, and he's wearing he's wearing like a hazmat suit, but he looked like Moby, who's a really famous vegan. So I was just sitting there watching him do his particular task and giggling to myself. They looked like Moby was like pouring guts out onto the machine. Yeah. <laughs> he just won't eat them. Huh? He just won't eat the guts. That's he just won't eat the guts. No. Yeah. yeah. Joshua, any uh, grisly moments? Maybe, um, may, maybe, maybe the scene when your character exited the show. That, that was wild. Yeah, um, the Kirk, the the guy who was the walker that bit my face. Uh, <laughs> you know, like the the pe- the, the um, prosthetic they had on my face was. Uh, I mean, that was gnarly. It was gnarly to get put on, and you know, get gnarly. It was gnarly to get ripped off. But I I made a mistake out because I, I had to play catch up because I was. When I got on the show, when I got on the show, I wasn't completely caught up because uh, season six hadn't hadn't been released yet on Netflix or wherever I needed. I could have watched it, and um, or maybe it had just gotten released. Anyways, I, but it was available on a plane, and I watched it in between two people. I watched the <laughs> I, I, because I was starting to shoot, and I and I was coming back from somewhere, and um, so I I was like, I need to watch this now, and so I watched the season six finale on a plane in between two folks. Um, which was a, a a big mistake. I think it's like it, it'd be the equivalent of like watching, you know, Boogie Nights or something, you know, like like it, with with somebody just like right next to you, just kind of you know, every occasionally glancing at your screen and then also glancing at you, like what kind of motherfucker watches this shit? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, it was gnarly. But yeah, on the show, I mean, the the exit was wild. It was that was an emotional thing. Yeah, I was. I love that scene. Cool. You because de- there's a thing I like uh, like when I see like when you're when you're the villain and then you lean into it but like when you die good like you make it so gratifying because it's like you killed him you're responsible for these people dying and you just gave like such a satisfying like which is really disgusting in my head I'm like yes yes I'm yeah, yeah. 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 that's the whole yeah. You're totally yeah. getting into exactly what I'm talking about. It's like, and you're like, and you're like grab, grabbing him, and you're like, yeah, you're like, grab the jacket, grab the jacket. Yeah, and it's like, look, it was so good. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, it's satisfying, huh? It's, I mean, well, it's yeah. funny too watching because because Polly and Anna, Polly Anna and I were about to do the Talking Dead, and I, I was sitting waiting to to you know just watching as the episode was playing on the East Coast, and seeing Twitter just be like. 
fuck that guy. He sucks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was like the perfect thing. Like everybody was just like, yes, he's dead. <laughs> yeah. Right. <Perfect>. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Walking Dead is a tr as a tremendously loyal and diverse and a worldwide fandom. Uh, what's been your favorite memory of uh, of meeting a Walking Dead fan? I'm, I'm the one who jumps in on everyone, so I'm just going to let someone else go first. My, are there, my, oh, oh, sorry, Coop, go ahead. No, no, you. Uh, you, you I, I'll, I'll be quick. Um, you, my friend, you do it. I, I've only had one tattoo. Joanna McDonald, um, who is a Scott. Uh, she, she got my, she asked me to sign her arm and I, I thought that was funny, but she, I knew at the time she was doing it for a tattoo. So I erased it many times and redid it and like, Oh, I don't want that on her arm forever. That looks very stupid. Uh, and had to do it right. But that was, that was kind of an amazing thing. Yeah, that's amazing. Nice. It's very cool. I, I enjoy the, uh, um, arguing with the Carol people, the Carolers. <laughs> it's like such a, cause I still, I mean, like. Like uh, 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 I, I still believe that they're they're they shouldn't be together. I'm still in that camp. Um, I just don't think that they, they love each other like that. That's just that's just my my take on it. But I love getting in some of my favorite debates or like when like someone comes into the line and then we just talk of like we just discuss it and then it's like we end up no ground shared but we still take the photo it's like <laughs> but, but like that's why like, i love that i love that a lot um and just but like i don't care it's <laughs> getting into these arguments with like perfect strangers about things we're equally passionate about is a uh, is a joy of mine so that's probably some of my my biggest takeaways from uh fan experiences <laughs> yeah cooper is often near next to me or near me during the conventions and at his table it's always very lively and he serves cobbler or he did i don't know if he still does do you still do that i don't want to guarantee no no i did i mean yeah I mean, he's always yeah, serving so. cobbler to um to the guests and that's really cool so it's like being in coop's kitchen he's very much himself and is having these vibrant chats which is awesome ah. um Mine is like I a pool, it. and I, I don't talk at all. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> nice to meet you. Goodbye. <laughs> it was like, you're so nice. I'm like, what did you expect? I was going to be a total bitch. Um, <laughs> so so uh, my favorite, well, one that comes to mind for me, which is really fun, was um, a young woman who had done some fan art online um, of Kelly Bensley of Jadis. And it was so impressive, this fan art. And I saw it and thought, oh, well, let me have a look at her page. And all her art was amazing. And she was really young. And, um, so I just kept her in my mind because she was also a tattoo artist, mm. uh, learning to be a tattoo artist. And I kept her in my mind thinking, well, if I'm up that way in Canada, in that side of the world, maybe I'll get in touch with her and see if she'll do me a tattoo. And sure enough, I was at Montreal, um, kind of feels like a million years ago, I was at Montreal, uh, film festival Fantasia for the film Darlin that Coop and I made together mm -hmm. and it was having its Canadian premiere there Darlin! and I got in touch with Kelly Bensley and said would you uh, come to my hotel and tattoo me by any chance is that something you can come and do so she did she traveled from Toronto to Montreal uh, with her brother and her girlfriend and they came and they did my tattoo and she did my tattoo oh you can't it's really yeah. crap to see it. It's not crap. It's a great tattoo. Ah. Really crap the camera. Look. Oh, we'll cut it. We'll cut okay. it. It's really crap. We got that's, it. Um, <laughs> that that's awesome. the ladybird for darling in a teardrop of blood. Um, and it's coming out of my vein. Because you, you make your first movie as a writer director. You want to, you shed some blood, you know? <laughs> um, so she did it on stage at the Q&A. She did the black outline in the hotel. And then she did the... Uh, the color on stage at the Q&A. So I wanted to, her to cool. have some attention for her work in the future as a tattoo artist for doing me such a favor. So that was pretty special. And I don't think I ever would have had that experience if it hadn't been for the show. Very nice. Pollyanna, while we're on the subject of Darlin, uh, I would love mm. if you would uh, share a little information about that since uh, it is a, a, again, it's it's a true to force of you and it co-stars Cooper and- uh, yeah, Thank you. And the, and the third part of the, does does the series have a name yet? Oh, so what you're referring to, obviously, uh, from obviously in my head, but some other people might not know, is um, I did a movie called The Woman, and I played the character of the woman, and she had been born out of a film called Offspring, 
yes. which was uh, based on Jack Ketchum's book. So Jack Ketchum's a very well-known horror writer, novelist, and so I played the woman in Offspring. Then we continued it into the woman, and I played the woman in that, and Lucky McKee directed it. It's actually just coming out on DVD again, that film, The Woman, and it's awesome. And then I wrote and directed Darling, which is the next part of the story, but you can watch it as a standalone. Cooper plays a wonderful nurse called Tony who finds um, this feral teenage girl who is found at hospital. And she's been raised in the woods by my feral and equally vicious character of the woman. And Darlin is her name. And she gets found um, at this hospital that's run by the Catholic Church and a priest, uh, the bishop who's in charge of the state um, and the hospital and also a care home takes her in to prove the miracle of the church by converting her from a feral wild child into a good girl and putting her through communion and everything. Speaking of but feral. it's a horror movie, so it doesn't go according to plan. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, hi. Wait, so it's, uh, so Pollyanna, is, it's like Nell, but with, with violent elements? It's like Nell with blood, yeah. 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 Um, it's and it's it's got so humor in it it's got it's got great music um it's got a lot of heart and lauren county is our young irish lead and she's phenomenal and it's got brian back from mad men in it and it's not only got cooper being brilliant but also um sabrina and tom who played my right and left in the junkyard who played brian and tamiel they've got oh. cameos as well one's a prostitute one's a cardinal <laughs> I write. I write family dramas. You'll leave that uh, that mystery up until we watch it, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's it, you can stream it on Amazon Prime and on all of those things and iTunes, and you can get it on DVD and Blu-ray um, all over the states, Canada, Germany, the UK by now, I hope. Um, but yeah, check it out, Darlin. D A R L I N apostrophe. No G. Dang. We're gonna do a, a, oh, we'll look, do a, a, a live on that. We're gonna do a proper oh. pitch. Okay. Yes. Ah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So that is the name of the film. It is Darlin'. By all means, check that out. And a reminder to our audience, if you would like to chat with our panelists as a group or individually, or even to purchase an autograph or get a personalized recorded message after this, please head over to galaxy.com. And with that being said, thank you for humoring my questions. I would love to ask Jude to roll our first one from our chat room. Nice. And this comes from Big E. Cooper, if you had to cast the New Day in The Walking Dead, what characters would they be? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I'd want to see them, like, in some kind of odd ro robot armor where they've just been, like, surviving the three of them and they just come in, like, the three fairy godmothers whoop some ass do something awesome and then head out in the sunset again and then keep coming back um they'd be that character or you know they're amish <laughs> yeah it's a solid or yeah space helmets or beers which one are you gonna go with yeah <laughs> Uh, very nice, very nice. So, uh, thank you for that one, Big E. Uh, dude, what you got next? From Ray, what pickup line would you use on your Walking Dead characters? Oh, hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> I, got, I got a cobbler in the van. You just uh, help me with this cobbler and help me put this cobbler in the van. If you just get around from there. That's me doing um, stuff for so not, uh, yeah. I, why for you uh, does a pickup line mean that you're going to be put in a basement yeah, <laughs> yeah well Jerry there's only one way to catch more. Jerry oh, wait, hang on. <laughs> I am the great and powerful wizard you will okay good <laughs> I always feel like the space pants one is a is a, a pretty big win. Space pants? Oh, do yeah. share. Are those space pants? Because uh, yeah, your ass is out of this world. <laughs> I feel you like Jared that would fall that work one. on Jared. Yeah, I think that. Would be yeah. Anything, anything that blows up his ego. Yeah. That is so funny. <laughs> that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm stalling for time. Uh, mm. For Jadis. You know what? Jadis is a woman of few words. And I think if you just came up to her and gave her one of those looks, like, she might be intrigued, you know? She might just as likely shove you into a pit with a with a walker armed and ready to kill you. But, you know, it might work. Give it a go. 
but she would appreciate that the risk taken, right? She would appreciate the risk taken, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I should have used the space pants line. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> thank you for that one. Okay, dude, what do we have next? Oh, this is from Amy. Uh, this is for Pollyanna. Did do, do you actually? I'll send this for Edward. Did anyone uh, keep a souvenir from any point uh, of their filming that you're willing to admit here? I I don't care now. I'm going to tell a secret that I wasn't supposed to do. Here you go. <laughs> it's hung on my wall underneath. A very cool um, piece of fan art. I'll show you that too. Let's do show and tell oh, yeah. in my office. Okay, so it's hung underneath this amazing Jadis hair piece that the fan did. And really this cool. was by Kelly. And she's a hairdresser. And she said in the back, I love your Jadis catch and their haircut. Inspired me to get a little artsy with junk. I've never made one of these before. I'm a hairdresser. So it's been fun working on and doing your hair. Isn't that sweet? So There's all these cool. amazing beads. So anyway, hung underneath that is the answer to the question, Amy. You remember how Brian always had a whistle around his neck? Probably not, but he did. He always had this whistle around his neck. <laughs> <laughs> and then I asked the um, wardrobe department, I said, can, can, for the last season, I said, can Anne have something that's from Jadis that just is a memory of her junkyard? I said, can you take Brion's whistle and can you bash it so that it's all bent? Like when he went through the grinder, it would have survived. So they did. And Anne, probably wouldn't have noticed this, guys, but Anne wore this around her neck, tucked into her top a lot, sometimes out. Um, and I just thought that was a nice memory of our, of our people. So when it came to the end, they had a spare. Nice. So, gentlemen, did you uh, have you any trinkets from the set? I kept bullet casings. I, I have bullet casings from my last day because Woody, Woody, the the arms guy on at least on the seasons I was on. I'm not sure if he's is Woody still around. He is still around. He's yeah. been on and off. He went off to do something else, but he's been back a couple of times. Yeah, yeah um, he would actors or something. Yeah, he he would use the uh, on at least on our day he used some live rounds and I I kept those, um, but nothing. I, I wish I would have gotten some cool like a piece of wardrobe. I, yeah, I do have. Like oh this? wait, speaking of show and tell, oh you got one too exactly. Yeah, you're totally not supposed to take them. I Are you really? Oh, oh really not? Because really they not. they reuse them, huh? I was told. God, you can just really get us to tell you things on these things, can't you? Especially with me. I was told that they that they give them away as special things, or that they sell them in boxes, like for fans and stuff. And so you're not supposed to take them. But that could have just been a rumor. But I've already taken this one when I was told you weren't to take it. So dang, I didn't know. I didn't no one told me. Anymore. I didn't. But I also I have just lying there. So it's yeah. natural that you would have done. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if when the person who told me it knew this full story anyway. I mean, you know. It's like, oh, we're revealing a, a, a important plot point where bullets are shot in the series. <laughs> when you spend tons and tons of money on your stuff for your TV show, you probably don't want people to get in the habit of just picking them up. Picking them up. Yeah, you're next right. thing you know, you'll be telling us there'll be zombies next season. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, you mean like this? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I took, I, this is, I always take the, the, prop, the props food because it always, <laughs> It's always better. Hi, bullet. Hello, buddy. Um, but uh, um, yeah, on that that first episode, we had this whole that whole fruit bowl scene, and I took home the majority of that fruit bowl. Um, and then sometimes I would slip in my car whatever weapon I was using, um, and I would take that home and swing it around. You practice with it. Practice with it. Uh, never to really use it, but you know, just to. You know, just in case. <laughs> just in case. Just in we, case. We did get these. I, I don't. We, we got these cool rap gifts that I. I'm. Oh, I, yeah. I realized this was so cool yeah. that Andy sent yeah. out to people. Um, it says, "My mercy prevails over my wrath." On it, and it's yeah. season season eight. 
Uh, it was so cool. I, I didn't realize yeah. that Andy had made these, and I, I got it. And I was like, oh, that's such a lovely thing from Walking Dead. And I then, didn't know Andy had made them. I thought the show had done it. I must thank him. I think it was an Andy thing. I, I was it told later. It sense that it was, yeah. Yeah, it, it's so cool. I just, got get, I just got it left in my trailer or something, and I was like, thanks, AMC, but that's so lovely. I'm going to thank him. Thanks for telling yeah. me that. Right. <laughs> and we thank you, Amy, for that. It was a really good question. So, Jude, what's next? And this one comes from JoJo. We all know Pollyanna can do an American accent. Can anyone else do accents? Hmm. The gentleman <laughs> that got the Cooper is ridiculous. Some accents we can go from, yeah, a few. Like, yeah. I mean, where you want to get, I mean, even we talking about get. walking through different parts. <laughs> I mean, you can go, uh, I don't know, like, it's like talking about like, the beach. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, accents, yeah. We were I talking about the Beatles earlier. You're talking about the Beatles? Oh, no. Ringo, let's put it yeah. on the fridge so everyone can see it. I'll just lay um, in a pocket. <laughs> uh, accents for me, I think I think this is the case for, uh, for you guys. I think we just have to listen. It's one of those things for me. If I if I can hear it, um, I like I, I listen for cadence more than I listen for accents. Accent is, is almost secondary in my mind when doing it. I, I I try to listen to the breakdown. So if, even if it's like a British person speaking, you might try and use the, it sounds like. Uh, Cooper does a really, I just maybe. found out the other day, Cooper does a really good, well, I think I heard had heard this many times before, but it, it I realized it again, that Cooper does a really good Kari. I was just thinking the same thing. I was like, that's how you do, you listen to Cadence, that's why you can do impressions of people so well. Come on, it's Cooper. So good. He, <laughs> no, he hates it. He's, he hates I like it. Him, I like he doesn't he hate it. it. He doesn't hate it. I like, uh, Kari, I love you. I say this with love. All right. I, I, by the way, this is like an open call. If anyone could do an imitation of me, I want to hear it so badly. Um, uh, I think but, Kari um, can. I imagine if anyone could do it, yeah, Kari could do it. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I always like imitating Kari. Uh, I like imitating Kari listening to me imitate him and him <laughs> gone. So I'll do like whatever. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't understand why I'm going to be this, this way. And then, and he'll be like, <laughs> Yeah, I do that. Yeah, I do that. That's a, all right. Yeah, that's good. That's all right. <laughs> so good. It's so uh, good. Yeah, man. <laughs> don't feel don't feel bad. Kari does impressions of you all the time. You just good. He, but, yeah, I hope so. I'd feel really bad if he didn't. But I mean, I always wait. I'm like, I get a lot of like the. Um, <laughs> get a lot of invitations for people. You just put marbles in your mouth, and then you can pretty much have a good start there. Oh, well, 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 uh, Polly, one who I love as a director, but she's able to direct everyone differently. She's able to kind of like she knows what kind of actor this person is. This so she, so she's able to just be herself, but explain it to each of us. Uh, and with me, a lot less words need to go into the process. So like, I was doing one scene, I was like going around the corner, and I was like this, and she goes, "You're looking a little like, <laughs> like." Like a penguin. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, huh. I was like, thank you for telling me that because there's so many shows and so many directors that just let me walk on that way. Um, I don't right. know why I walk like that. I walk funny. <laughs> I always walk like I'm about you to break something. So I'm always like, well, I always feel like I'm going to break something, or like, or like, even if I'm walking, my legs need to be like wide because if you put too much pressure at one point, you're going to fall through the floor. So <laughs> I shoot everything like it's ice. I think a lot of directors are, you know, who haven't been actors are very conscious that they don't want to hurt our admittedly usually quite sensitive um, uh, egos or, or, or senses of ourselves or, or just, you know, our hearts or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's nice when you have acted as a director where you can know that sometimes a simpler thing works better, you know, yeah. because it shows that you're willing to take a risk with them and not treat them like a kid, you know. Yeah, and it's also, I know it's coming from a place of like, oh, I'm doing this for this you and for me. It's yeah. not like, this hey, asshole, better. your arms are, you know, it's like a very, which it was yeah, really funny. Because I was, like, I, was like, I know that, I know what I was doing. 
<laughs> yeah, Rude. it's like I'm with you. I see you. Yeah. You're good. You don't need to do that. Let's do it this way. And then it's like, I, I mean, actors are taking risks in everything they do. So if a director is willing to show, they're willing to speak to you as if you're a risk taker and can take some, you know, some comments, then I think we're always going to be on a better page. I don't mind it when people tell me I look daft or something. Yeah, I'm no, like, not me. I'm making a choice. What? <laughs> I'm making yeah, a choice. It's a choice to look daft. What do you mean? Yeah. I'm a great actor. <laughs> uh, Am I nailing it? I feel like I'm nailing it. <laughs> Look how hard I'm nailing this naturalism. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, 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 we have time for just one more question. So I'll ask you to roll out our final one from our chat room. And it comes from Rich Shong and wants to know what was your favorite scene in The Walking Dead to shoot? That's a great one to leave off on. Oh, yeah. For me, I'd have to say it was my first scene that I ever did because it was just so exciting to be there and having that eye to eye with Andy and seeing that we were connecting and he was the kind of actor who uh, was really focused in there and was really encouraging, but was really in the moment with you. That was exciting because that's all I want with another actor is that we're actually really communicating and it was super cool. I was like, I'm going to enjoy this show from that point on. Yeah, mine was that for the first scene. I, I, same same thing. I think it, it you just it's just such an amazing thing to be there, to be invited into that world, and and for for us to kind of share that uh, first experience with all the other badasses that were working that day of the kingdom. And um, that was just amazing. Yeah, man, I miss, I miss our kingdom days when it was like, like all of us, just our, our kingdom people and our kingdom villains, just sitting on the concrete, like, like getting sunburnt from below. On the concrete. Like, I'm just moving the, uh, the 18 by the 24 bys around just like, Oh yeah, these God, giant, sun, these yeah. giant things to block the sun. Like every, like, like while we're while we're acting, there are people like, <laughs> <laughs> like as you're getting it, like like cloud cover. Yeah. <laughs> Moving yeah. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, I miss I miss those scenes. Um, there's so many. But my favorite scenes are the ones where it's always like the big when we have all of us are together. Like in season seven, I I really enjoyed when we did our final battles. The first time I think you and and I met Polly, uh, and mm -hmm. we had. Yeah, that was. It was awesome. like, okay, whose turn to run? Whose turn to sprint? Yeah, and like yeah. everyone had to like. Hey, and I was watching was kids sprint with so much heavy stuff and whoa! I was like, dude, I can't be complaining. Look at him. I pulled that hamstring. Pulled that hamstring. Pulled that hamstring so hard. <laughs> um, uh, but then you know, like we had. I mean, I've, yeah. So which always ended up being like battle sequence. I liked almost every battle we've done because it's almost like, yeah. it's like all right, let's all sweat. Let's all sweat like hell, shoot a bunch of things, watch stuff blow up, and uh, I'll see everybody as it's you know as it's going on. It's it was my favorite days. And then bring in the horses. We got yeah. Uh, all right, we yeah. Set the horses. <clears throat> Do not look the horses in the eyes. <laughs> Do not look them in the eyes. Oh, God. Like, yeah, like, God. oh geez. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, be nice, Richard. Thank you for that question, uh, guys. Real quick, uh, uh, do you have any upcoming projects that uh, you may be allowed to share with us that could be in the works? We oh, we know, must we know. Going to go to work again. Some people got some stuff in before uh, before the unpleasantness. So yeah. <laughs> I, I did an yeah, episode yeah. of this show, Doom Patrol, that I, it'll be. Oh, uh, I love that! Going, yeah, yeah be rad. I, I did a um, a movie called Greenland with with uh, also Scott uh, Gerard Butler. I have a big fight oh, scene yeah. with that guy, and then uh, I did a movie called Respect with. Uh, it's called um, yeah, Respect with with uh, with Jennifer Hudson playing Aretha Franklin. I play a drummer. I play Ooh. Muscle Shoals drummer Roger Hawkins in that. That'd be cool. Ooh, I want to see uh, that. Yeah. Oh, it's going to okay. be hot stuff. I think. Let me that, that movie. Because I want to see that. Now, Joshua, you had a bit part in uh, Ant Man, correct? <laughs> yeah. So, that's, that's so, now, so, now you, so now you're part of the Marvel and DC cinematic television universes. Yeah. I, I'm hoping Marvel doesn't know. Because <laughs> I, <laughs> I showed up and, man. Well, it's I, not like you're on the internet or anything right now, mate. No, I, no <laughs> it was like Sonny Birch's goon or something. And, I, I think I originally had a, well, 
I had a name and, and it was originally Derek because at a certain point, Walt Goggins is like, Derek, take care of her. But that got that part got cut, so my character got moved to uncredited. And so I'm like, oh man, not only did I appear the Marvel Universe, I, I don't even I'm uncredited and this maybe I can come back. I'm hoping I can come back. But I Yeah, they'll bring, yeah, yeah, you'll be back. Yeah, that's not <laughs> you'll a, be back. Awesome. You, you'll be I, back. Come on. Come on, you'll I, be back. Come on. I may or may not be doing a Walking Dead film that um that Andy is involved in playing Rick. Um, you know. Let's see what happens. <laughs> we we gotta know. Um, we gotta know what happened on the helicopter. Exactly. We gotta know what happened beyond the helicopter. Um, so that might be something I've got to look forward to. Uh, Paulina, is it, can you yeah. can you say if you're shooting that stateside or or? Oh, I can't even say if I'm actually shooting it at all. Oh, okay, copy. Because I don't know, of course. Yeah, that's okay. Sure. <laughs> But, you know, that would be something that would be fun if we were to be doing that at some point. That would be cool. um, And then, of course, my film, Darlin', I want everybody to see, if you're just joining us, Darlin', D-A-R-L-I-N, apostrophe, a film that Coop and I were in together and that I wrote and directed. Um, you can IMDb me for other stuff. But as far as what's coming up, um, I think I'm going to be making my next feature as a director, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I got a video game, which... Oh, okay. Well, okay. A video game. That's it. I can say. Can talk about um, it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, um, yeah, Shazam too. Whenever, whenever uh, World of Hollywood opens up. But yeah, best stepdad, best stepdad ever. Yeah. Oh, I, I will agree. take care of you. <laughs> Sorry, we will feed you tang. <laughs> I was well, going to say I'd be remiss to well, I knew Patty was about to come in, sorry I would be remiss not to mention Lodge 49 which is another AMC show that's on Amazon and on Hulu and it's oh, yeah. really brilliant and really human and actually a great show to watch right now, there's two seasons out and I'm in the second, all the way through the second and season I'm, it's great. I, I absolutely agree, I fell in love with it three episodes it's in and, and, yeah. Yeah, and funny and weird and cool and I dig it and Paul Giamatti's in it and I got to work with him and I was like I've oh! got one of my Usos in there. It's got Sam Pufu in there too. That's right. It's got uh, the dearest of Sams. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, so few Samoans had to throw it out there. Yeah, it's got a Samoan in it, guys. So check it out. It's got a Samoan. <laughs> we got one. We got a Gentlemen and lady, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we look forward to all these projects that you've talked about. We absolutely look forward to the world returning to normal, and we look forward to having you live on our stages in front of your audiences and in front of your fans. Thank you so much for joining thank us you. here. GalaxyCon viewers, this has been the cast of The Walking Dead. That was my time, but it doesn't have to be yours. If you want to chat with our panelists as a group, individually, or purchase an autograph, or get a personalized recorded message, please head over to GalaxyCon.com. And while you're there, please sure to check out our upcoming schedule of events like this. Tomorrow, we will be have the cast of the My Hero Academia and the captain himself, Mr. William Shatner. Bye-bye, everyone. Oh, no. Take care. Oh, Come Come back. Pollyanna no, and no, no. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Be safe. Play us out. <laughs>